Welcome. Great to be here. I'm stepping in for Gregory once. He was supposed to give this, uh, this talk, but he couldn't make it. So I'm going to talk about DAF. So who am I? I'm a statistical consultant methodologist. Uh, I work at Statistic Netherlands, which is the official statistic office. So we are a bit of like the US Census, Labor Statistics, all combined in the same office. Um, my GitHub account is over there. And as I said, I'm stepping in for Gregory once. So what is DAF? Oh, well, the short version is this one. If you catch this one directly, then you don't need the rest. Uh, DAF is DIFF for data frames. So uh, it's just a small utility package which detects changes in data, so in data frames. You can store this and restore this DIFF, so you can uh, look, look at the difference between two data frames, store this difference and apply it later on so you can patch data. You can also merge two data frames together to, to get one data frame. Uh, and you can render the difference, so you can see where the changes were. So this is the short version. Let's go to the long version. So, for anyone asking, probably most of you know, but diff is a command line utility for comparing text files, and everybody is using it, uh, either explicitly or implicitly. So it's used in all source code control systems and diff checks text files, specifically it checks, it ch uh, compares changes in lines of text. So with diff you can check which lines have changed, removed or added. Well, diff is a tool which is specifically uh, tailored for data frames. So it's a utility for comparing tables and diff compares records and columns. So not lines, but records and columns. So it can detect which values have changed, which rows have been added or removed, and it can ch check if columns have been added or removed. It's just simple like that. So <coughs> why would you do this? Well, a couple of scenarios come to my mind. So one thing you would like to do is support version control of data frames. So suppose you have a script running and it produces a data frame and you have later on an updated data file and you run it again, you would like to see if the output changed or not, or what the difference are between two subsequent steps, for example. So you would log, try to log changes in your data frames, for example. Uh, that's especially true for black, block, black box processes. You don't should have them, but sometimes you do. So then you would like to know what did this black box process do to my data. Um, and Last point is a, a nice one. Um, I don't support manual editing at all. You should really, really, really don't do this. But sometimes uh, it happens. And you would like to be, to be re reproducible. So you would like to track changes in your data. So many you make changes in your data and maybe let them apply on a new version of the data. So this is one use case, for example, a raw audit update. I just mentioned it already, suppose you have a nice R script which takes raw data as an input, um, removes the errors, fits a model, calculates an output, but then you get a call and your customer or your uh, employee says, okay, I have a new version of the data set. It happens. It happened to me quite a lot. Somebody can confirm that? Yeah, it happens. Then you would like to know, so is my output still the same? Is it very different than what I had? And also, did the input change very much? But because most of the time your time goes into removing the errors and preparing your raw data, and then you would like to know, did something structural change in my data or not? Because otherwise it fails miserably. So, Dev supports that. Uh, and the other thing, bad practice, don't, don't, don't do this, but as I said, it just happens. Um, sometimes you, you have an and input manual editing step and you would like to compare the input and output. And the good thing about dev is then you can reproduce this change. So data plus changes is new data, or if you want to rephrase it in dev, diff, so version one plus patch is a new version. Um, the dev protocol is the highlighter diff format, which is not defined by me, but with somebody else, Paul Fitzpatrick, um, and it's published in this URL. 
It's a diff protocol for tabular data, so it's very similar to diff, but only tailored to tabular data. And it shows all these things. So rows, columns changed, as patching data, and uh, quite nifty, the format itself is also in tabular format. So you can store the patch itself in a database or a CSV, or which I find quite nifty. So as I said, I'm just repeating myself, uh, change fills, row adding additions, row removals, column adding additions, column removals, and uh, this one is a, a, a catchy one, so suppose your uh, um, types change of a column. Well, it's partially supported in dev, so the R package does support it, it detects that the type has changed and can patch it also, but the Highlighter format does not, so the, the protocol did not, or does not yet support it. So how does it work? So there's a function diff data, and uh, suppose we have these two very, very simple data frames, x and x changed. So you can see b uh, is, has been changed into 100. What you can do, you can track the, the change, so diff underscore data checks its change, the change, so um, we get a patch, we can print it, and you can see and this, this is the format, uh, the dev format, so you use arrow one and one changed in 200. So you can check, you can read uh, specifically what, what, what has been changed. So suppose we want to apply this, so what you can do, you can apply this change to the data, so suppose this was X and we can patch the data with this patch and then you can see the data is changed into what it was or is. So you can replay the change on the original data. So this supports the, 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 the scenario that when you get updated data, you can reapply all manual edits to the data if you want to. Um, well, these are the other scenarios. So suppose a row was added. So similar to right here, you can see the syntax is plus, plus, plus for a row addition. You can remove a row, row, so the syntax is minus, minus, minus. It's very uh, easy to follow, I think. Uh, the same thing for columns, so you get an extra row in there, signing that the column has been added, C. Can also do the same trick, with, of course, with removal. <coughs> but the bottom line is you can track all, all these things and it's quite tunable. So uh, you can, uh, for example, you can also, what a neat thing is you can also support, uh, supply ID uh, uh, columns. So you can supply how should the algorithm identify which rows are unique? So you can really check for which rows have been removed or not. You can also ignore columns so that it won't check changes in those columns. You can ignore white spaces or all kinds of settings. So I advise you to, if you're interested, I advise you to, to look in the manual. Um, um, maybe people saw also the function differs from. Differs from is just a helpful function where the arguments are uh, inverted. So you can use it in a pipe friendly way. So for example, you can see exchange differs from. It's the same thing. It's just syntactic sugar for the diff underscore data. I also mentioned merge data. Merge data is helps you to suppose you have a scenario. It, I haven't across this scenario. I haven't come across the scenario, but it's, uh, it, it also seems to happen that you have one data frame, and in parallel there are two change there are two changes made to these data frames. So you have a version A, A, and a version B, and then you can merge these changes into one parent data frame. So, for example, A in in version X underscore A. A was 100, and in version X and B, B was 100, and if you merge them, then you see that the change will be 100, 100. It's combining the, the changes. So what you can do easily is uh, writing and reading to disk. So for example, diff, you can write the difference of a data frame to disk, and read it again from disk. What I forgot to mention, or maybe go back, yeah. Uh, you can also, oh, it's not, not in the options I showed over here, but you can, you can instruct dev to uh, plot all data or just the, the changed lines, comparable to diff. Diff also only shows the lines that have been changed. 
Uh, last but not least, least, you can render a result, so which helps for detecting what has been changed. For example, if suppose we have this data frame X uh, with A and B, and we change, make these changes, so we remove column A and we remove a row one, and we pipe this thing through render diff, you get a visual table showing uh, which rows have been removed, which uh, values have been modified, and uh, which columns have been added or not. It's not my, uh, I just built a wrapper with uh, Gregory, but the main work has been done by Paul Fitzpatrick. Uh, he's written the library dev.js. Um, so most credits should go to him, I think. Um, and actually the library itself is written in hex, which is a kind of uh, uh, unknown uh, programming language, but it compiles to uh, JavaScript, Python, C++, and uh, lots of other languages. It's quite nifty. Uh, I use the, or we use the R package V8 to run dev.js, which is a fantastic package, by the way, from Jeroen Ohms. So for, uh, for someone who doesn't know, but V8, with V8 you can run any JavaScript library from within R. It's very, it's very well done. So we just write on the back of dav.js. There is another library in R, which is also very well written. It's called diffobj, uh, and it's very good. It's for, for general purpose diff for all R objects. So I advise you also to look in this one. Provides nice visualization for difference between R objects, maybe even nicer than our own package. Uh, and it also includes a diff CSV function, but it, it's more limited than dev. So dev is more optimized for data frames, while Diff object is more for general purpose diffing for all, uh, thank you, all uh, our objects. So for example, def uh, allows for data aligning so you can recognize which records are identical or not. You can ignore columns and uh, also does diff object not, does not support right now patching of data, which is quite a nice feature, I think. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you're interested, I, I uh, invite you to install the package, or you can then visit my uh, GitHub account. Thank you. Questions, all right. Hi, so um, eh, where I work, uh, you know, row order is, is not taken very seriously, so people take a spreadsheet and like, filter it and reorder it a few times and then give it to you. And that's your version too. Does uh, DAF support uh, reordering of rows? So will it notice it's the same thing but reordered or something like that? Yeah, you have to specify an ID column of multiple, one or multiple ID columns of course, because it, because it has to identify somehow which row is uh, identical. Uh, but it supports that, yeah. And you can also tweak if it should look for that or not with all kinds of uh, parameters you can specify. Okay, thanks. Again, thank you, fascinating talk. Um, so uh, how robust do you believe the patching is? Meaning we can think of various scenarios in which this would get really ugly very fast. So mm -hmm. how, how much, how reliable do you see it as? Uh, so what are you afraid of? What, what kind of so the, the, the basic use case you gave is that you took the file, you changed it some way, then you give it the original file, and then you patch it. Obviously, if you reorder the rows, start changing the values inside it in places that the patch should apply. How, so it could, I, I agree, I think it could get very messy very quickly. So uh, with yeah. your experiments, how robust was it? Well, the, the original author, so Paul Fitzpatrick, did all kinds of tests. Uh, we do some testing in our own package. Um, but to be honest, I don't know how robust it is for every reordering. We di didn't build a very, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, comprehensive test. So we still have to do this. But uh, if you have any ideas, uh, I will implement it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how about performance in case of big data frames? Because you're yeah. using a JavaScript. Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, JavaScript is quite uh, fast, by the way. But the, the main thing is uh, the data is copied, and that's the, that's the main thing. 
So uh, on my long, long, long to-do list, and I have some other things to do, to do to too, is uh, transforming it to a C++ uh, implementation. But that's future work. But yeah. What is the behavior when there's a merge conflict? Good question again. Um, right now, it uh, when you do a merge, the last version you specify will win. So it doesn't warn. It's one of the things we just have to uh, uh, implement. That's a good one. Yeah. Any more questions for Edwin? We have a few more minutes. All right. Hi, Edwin. Uh, Hi. Nice idea. Thanks a lot. Um, I was wondering, have you looked into how difficult it would be to make a hex to R uh, converter? <laughs> uh, no, I, I haven't yet. No. <laughs> Any plans or ideas for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. We keep being saved by the last question. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the package. I'm actually using this a lot, and it makes How robust is it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's very robust. Okay. I only run into performance problems sometimes, okay. and especially with the rendered HTMLs. Okay, yeah. Like, for example, if you add a column, they tend to get huge because every yeah. line is suddenly yeah. printed. And, and I wonder if there's a way to control this or if you plan to implement this. Yeah, or we're looking in into that. Uh, I was just hacking it to make it fast, but so uh, yeah, it's, it's on our list to, to improve. Yeah. Cool, yeah. thanks. Okay. <laughs> no more questions? This, is, this would be the last one for real. All right, thank you, Ed. You're welcome. <laughs>